Bobby Rimmer. Tom How Jeffries. are you, mate? I'm fine, thank you. You're good? I'm really well, yeah, I'm really well. Here in sunny California. Yes, uh, yes. It's great to have you here, mate. Great to see you. Yeah. Bobby, people who don't know who you are, I want to tell them in the intro, uh, tell me a little bit about yourself. If you meet someone for the first time that don't have a clue who you are. Okay, um, a professional boxing coach from Manchester in England. Um, used to train Tony Jeffries along with other fighters. And at this moment in time, I'm in California helping... Quentin Rampage Jackson for his next fight on the 20th of January. Yeah, so boxing coach, you've been doing it forever, really, haven't you? Yeah, for too long, too long. Forever. I, th I think I, 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 when, when I finished boxing when I was 25, um, about 27, I walked back to Hardwick Lads, who, what was my amateur gym, and I started helping train the amateurs and, and staying involved with it, you know what I mean? Because boxing's a kind of sport where when you leave it, you kind of want to stay in it, don't right. you? It, yeah. it kind of keeps, keeps hold of you, doesn't it? And, um, you know, and I thought, right, so I started helping out in the amateur gyms. And then I, I, I'd known Billy Graham and Joe Graham for, for, for many years. Uh, we used to all keep dogs together. And um, we used to all... And, and Billy Graham was obviously training Ricky Atten. Yeah. So I got to meet Billy again, and we used to take the dogs for walking together and stuff like that. And... Uh, I was saying to Billy, like, you know, I'm thinking about opening my own gym. So Billy says, well, why don't you open one with me? And then that was it. Yeah. Ricky Atten, Michael Gomez, Anthony Farnell, all the, all the kind of good, good kids from around that era all trained at the gym with us. So I was the assistant coach with all them. Yeah. You know, Billy was the head coach. I was the assistant coach. That was classic. And uh, back in 2000. Six, maybe was yeah. it around that time? Yeah. Where that that have been? That have been like the biggest gym in in England. Oh yeah, Macklin and. Oh no, it was before that, Tony. It was, was it? probably. It, I mean, Ricky beat Costa Zoo in two thousand and five. Right. So it was probably a bit before then. It was probably from about two thousand and three. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. That that gym was absolutely booming, and everyone in boxing was talking about yeah. more, more about Billy Graham because he was Hatton's coach, and Hatton was the yeah. biggest superstar in, in boxing. Of course, yeah. Uh, and, and you were a big part of that. And then that uh, that's a legendary English boxing gym. That and just for any of the American people that are watching and listening to this, I can't like got to tell the story about how good that gym is. Yeah. I mean, you know, you know what what happened the the, the gym. When me and Billy decided that we was going to go in partners and build a gym, Kerry Kays was Ricky's, just starting to be Ricky Atten's um, nutritionist. Yeah. And, and, and everybody knows Kerry Kays was the man who, who brought CMP nutrition to the front and into the boxing and stuff. Yeah. So Kerry was probably the first... It, it, in Manchester, in it, maybe in England, Kerry was the first nutritionist that boxers and coaches started listening to right. in the beginning. Because I remember Kerry working, Kerry Cage was working with Ricky Atten in 2002. Before that, you said he was the first one people used to start listening to. Am I right in thinking, like, before that, it was, everyone was old school and it was just like, eat as little as possible. And Ridiculous. Right. Yeah, I'll tell you the story. Michael Gomez, he was world champion. When, when and he was a lunatic, you know what <laughs> yeah. like. He was an absolute raving lunatic, this kid. And for the last week leading up to a fight, he was drinking three glasses of water a day and a tin of tuna. Bloody hell. Now, that's, that's, how, that's how bad it was. Yeah. And Kerry Kays came and started pumping protein into him and all that. So you can imagine, imagine the problems that they had. Right. What Kerry had in the beginning, trying, yeah. to, trying to get... Because they're going to they're gonna put weight on first, aren't they? Yeah. You yeah. know, because they've been eating silly daft things, like, you know what I mean, and doing daft things. But Kerry, Kerry was the... F Kerry Kays went a great way towards where Ricky Atten and all the lads got to. Yeah. I remember when, uh, when I was working with you, I was working with Kerry Kays as well as my nutritionist, and there was one time where I, would, I'd be, I was dieting for, like, well, forever. I'd done it correctly. I thought I'd done it correctly. And... I'd never lost any weight. I was like six pound over. I never lost any weight in a week. No. And he was like, and I went and seen him. Like, Kerry, I've been eating. He went, what have you been eating? So I wrote it all down. And he's like, Tony, that's 900 calories. Go out tonight and have a pizza. Yeah. I went, are you fucking mad? I'm <laughs> fighting. I'm fighting in ten days. Are you mad? We no, go out tonight and have a pizza. And I was like, he went, Tony, look down. I said, Tony, trust us. Do it. 
Yeah. So I was like, this, this is not right. Yeah. So anyway, I went, fuck that. I went out, had a pizza. Yeah. Next day, went on the scales and I was like eight pound overweight. I was like, shit, I should never listen yeah, to him. I should yeah, never yeah, listen yeah, to him. Yeah, yeah. And then the next day, yeah, then it starts coming it off. It comes straight off and I was four yeah. pound over. So, so it's just like bump your metabolism up, right? Bump yeah. up now. Told your body to start straight working. Back down. Yeah. And that's like the, the, the cheat meal and that's where I was like, wow. It, it did exactly the same toll. When Ricky Atten was training for Costa Zoo, they brought two sparring partners in from Argentina, a kid called Guillermo Saputo and Victor Hugo Castro. And these two sparring partners took Ricky to pieces the first couple of days. And Ricky was flat, couldn't do anything. And, and Kerry said to Ricky, get a Chinese tonight. Now, I, the, 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 the Billy Graham's face was a fucking picture. Because <laughs> <laughs> he was old school. And Kerry's told Ricky to get, you know, to go out like, you know what I mean? But Ricky Atten being Ricky Atten, you know, give him an inch, he takes a yard, yeah, doesn't he? Yeah. So Kerry said, just go and get a Chinese, meaning just the thing like, anyway, he's gone in the Chinese chip and gone right through the fucking car. <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah, I mean, Ke Kerry was the, the very first one, you know, and, and what I was getting to about the gym was, I said to Kerry, I'm looking for, we're looking for a place to build the gym, me and Billy. And he went, well, this mill's full of places. And it's, and it's the old hat factory where yeah. Better Bodies Gym is. Kerry owned the big bodybuilding gym. Yeah. And where Better Bodies Gym is, it's in the old hat factory called Moses Hat Factory in Denton. Yeah. So there's all annexes leading off it, you know, off, off, off the gym. Anyway, as look at it, we, we went and viewed this, this gym, this annex to make a gym. And believe it or not, Kerry's sun bedroom was covering the door to that room. So when we... Sunbed? Yeah, the, he had a sunbed room. What, oh, you right. used to go on a lot. Sunbed. <laughs> so he had a sunbed, a sunbed room. And when he ripped the sunbed out and knocked the door out, it led right into our gym. Right. So that's how the gym became attached to Better Bodies. All oh, right. Yeah. You know, the boxing gym. Yeah, so, yeah. So Kerry, you know, Kerry did all the weights with the boxers and, you know, he'd done everything. He was great, you know what I mean? So then it, that was why it become, became so well good, the gym. Because yeah. if you came in, like you did, when you, Joe Gallagher was there when you was there, and when you, when you went training with Joe, you had Kerry Kays, a nutritionist, you had everything yeah. by training at that gym, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah definitely. so it was more attractive for, for fighters, oh, professional of fighters was, to go yeah. to that gym. Yeah. You own Better Bodies Gym now, right? No, no, it's my son owns it now. Right. Um, I, I, I owned Better Bodies Gym. When Kerry retired, I took Better Bodies Gym on in the boxing gym. And then now, listen, I'm 58 years of age. How long have I got? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, it, it, on a serious note, I mean, how long have I got? Maybe. I don't know. And um, <laughs> so, so our Robert now is training all the boxers in England. Oh, he is? Yeah, yeah. He's, he's their trainer now. He's well, the, the, the boxing trainer of Stanford? Yeah, yeah. Oh, all, nice. all of it, yeah. He's, he's, he's good at it, our Rob. I mean, yeah. he's been in it th th for as long as I've been in it. He's been coming to the gym, so... Yeah. So our Robert's got it, hasn't he? Do you know what I mean? He's yeah. picked it up really, really well, and he's boxed yeah. himself. Yeah. So he, so 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 he, he's then the lads are all in his capable hands. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, like you said, I started off. I trained with Joe Gallagher for my first professional fight uh, in Better Bodies Gym. Didn't work out, and I was looking for another trainer. And my promoter Frank Maloney at the time, and <laughs> Kelly Maloney now. So, so mate, we'll get on to that. <laughs> that's a different story. Yeah. That's a different I story. can't you wait to hear what we're, he's got to say about We're going to tell you something about this, this <laughs> Kelly Maloney. You'll never believe, but anyway, we'll get to that, won't we? Uh, so I was looking for another trainer. I said, Frank, I, I, I don't want to train uh, with him. So Frank went, oh, yeah, come down to London and, and train with these guys. So I went down to London. I stopped in Frank's house for, for the night. Did you? And, uh, <laughs> and wow. Then, and then, <laughs> Did anything happen? <laughs> No, mate. No, mate. No. <laughs> anyway. No high heels are out like that. No. <laughs> see that picture you just posted uh, recent as well on one of your weigh-ins? Oh, did you see that, Bobby? I should have tagged you in it. Why? Well, he stood weigh on scales and, uh, and Frank's like this. Looking over. <laughs> looking, at, looking at your thing. <laughs> <laughs> so Frank was like, training with this guy. I can't remember who he was. He was a nice, nice guy in the gym and I just I didn't, didn't get the feel for it. And this is, now I've, I've got, I'm like, Six weeks off from, from me, uh, second professional who, who fight. Who did you train with in London? I can't remember the name, but he had a couple of he had a couple of champions. But I just the the fit it didn't fit. He had he had Darren Sunderland, didn't he? And he had Darren Sunderland, but that wasn't his trainer. It was someone else who I went and trained with. Right. Then uh, 
I, I was texting Brian, so I knew Brian rose from the amateur days, went to the Europeans together, boxing England together, and Brian trained with Bobby, and he was like, come back to Manchester and, and try a session with Bobby. So I went there and like straight away from, from day one, we clicked. Yeah, and, really often, yeah. And I, I really think that with, obviously trainers, it's so important that you click with the trainer. But one thing what was separated you from, not just uh, that trainer in London, but from every other trainer that I ever worked out with, was your work ethic. Like, mm. you would hold the mitts for the pads for us. Every, like, every single every session, session. Every yeah. single session, it would be like, pads, 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 bag. We don't do, do anything else, but boxers love to hit the pads. Yeah. But Trainers do want to hit, hit, that, hit that's the pads. My, for that's my yeah. main thing, wearing the body belt. I wear the body belt and the pads, and that, I do that all the time because yeah. that's just my thing. I like doing that. That's, yeah. that's what I like to do. Do you know what I mean? And I think why that's so important as well. You can get a feel for like how well you're punching and your punch power and all that kind of yeah. stuff. Yeah. And you're right there yeah. in, in, in the yeah. opponent's you know space. Yeah. Whereas if you're just kind of sticking them on the bag all the time and just watching them shadow box all the time and just barely doing any mitts yeah. and just watching the sparring, it's like. You're not really getting that hands-on feel, I don't think. Yeah. See, see tra 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 training, you can be two ways. You can be a lazy trainer or an active trainer. Yeah, yeah. big time. And, and, you know, some trainers just say to the lads, right, you're all on the bags today and this, that and the other. And for me, that, I, that's not training. And I'm not being disrespectful to any other trainers, but just leaving your lads on a bag. Yeah. You know, you see some trainers, the lads are on the bag and they're on the phone. Yeah, yeah. we see it often. It's ridiculous, you yeah. know what I mean? And yeah. so... You know, I always found because I learned I learned my training off Billy Graham. Right. And Billy Graham was body belt and bar, wasn't it? Yeah. That yeah. was it. Yeah. Body belt and jump in the bar. And it, and that was the same with me. That's who I learned off. So I mean, I still do the body belt now. I mean I did I do five minute rounds with him, Quentin. <sighs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And it, have a look, you don't half let them go, you know what I mean? But I've just got a new body belt made off Sergio Garibe, so... Right. And he makes the best ever, you know what I mean? Nice. So, so I've got that over here, do you know what I mean? Yeah. And another thing with Bobby as well, like, you'd wrap me hands, you'd spend 30, 40 minutes on wrapping me hands yeah. before every single session with mm. gauze, with tape. Yeah. And, and, and with... You never paid me for that, you know. I still owe you money for that, don't I? Yeah. He's never <laughs> seen that. Yeah. I'll, give, I'll give you a T-shirt after, mate. That, that'll do. I've, got, I've had I'll give you a free gym since, membership. Since the first time I came here, even. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, you see, because I knew your hands was bad. Yeah. I, I knew it that in them days. Listen, you punched hard. You was one of the hardest punches I've had on the pads. And you punched very correctly because of your amateur days. But, and I knew by your hands, because I'll never forget when the first time you clenched your fist, that finger won't go down, would yeah, it, or yeah. one of them? Still would the it, that still oh, the right. same? Yeah. I'll never forget that, do you know what I mean? So when I wrapped his hands, I used to put a, some under there so that, that finger would grip press it. right down, yeah. wouldn't it? Yeah. That's the only way you could do it. But that's, that comes down to you like giving a shit about the fighters that you're working exactly. with. Yeah. That's what it comes down to. And it's, it's some Same thing with other trainers, like... They're not emotionally invested in the fighters or yeah. the, the See, clients that, that's or whatever my side they're in. That's my problem. I'm, I'm, an, I'm really hands-on training. I get yeah. to know the lads and they've all stayed at my house and lived yeah. with me at certain points of time. And I mean, I got Tony's flat, didn't I? And yeah. sort, sorted his flat out for him and yeah. off my mates and stuff like that. But that, because I, I believe you train, you, your fighters have got to be happy. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And because you're spending that much time with your coach and your, your trainer, I mean, and you, you get this kind of bond with them like like nothing else really because no. you've got to trust put your trust into your coach like the coach you've got to put trust in the fighter like yeah. as much as you as you can like yeah. trust them on anyone especially the hour before a fight there's there's when you when you're feeling a little bit vulnerable yeah. the only person there you've got your team around you've got your family yeah. your dad or whoever it might be but there's that bond with your coach yeah. that's like like nothing else yeah. you know see, see don't forget what, what people forget about boxing is that Young fighters and fighters that are just setting out in the professional career, you know, they, they, they're nervous. They, 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 if, you've got to be nervous to yeah. get to getting and winning, and 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 you've got to be there to help them with them nerves and not not to to just to calm them down and tell them, look, everything's going to be okay. We're going to be okay, and be talking to them. You can't just expect to meet them at, meet them at the show. Yeah. 
get their hands wrapped and then go and fight. It, mm. that, that, for me, that never worked. You know, yeah. it was always part of being around them and being with them and explaining this and you know telling them stuff and, and trying to try to keep the nerves down a little bit. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and that comes with the, the, the trust that you're building. Like the time you're spending thirty minutes wrapping my hands when we're talking and you're asking about my family and all that, and we're yeah. getting to know each other on that on that level. See, so some people think that. You, your coach should be your coach, not your friend. Where, I mean, for some people that might work. Some In some sports, it that's fine. It does work. But boxing's such yeah. a, um, yeah. you know, it's you know, life's on on the line, yeah. isn't it? Every time you I go mean, in there, it's, so it's like it's, it's got to be like that. I, I mean, Billy Graham used to turn up at the gym at quarter to twelve, train the lads, and then Billy went home. That was yeah. it. Do you know what I mean? And, and it works for some fighters. It works for some people. It works. You know what I mean? The victory is a lot more sweeter, though, isn't it? Like you take someone from scratch, and then yeah. you get emotionally invested with them, spend a long time, and form yeah. that relationship, and then when they do succeed, you feel like you're succeeding with them. Yeah, it's like it's like me and me and Brian Rose. I mean, me and Brian Rose probably spent more time together than than, than you know when, when Tony was there. Tony lived with me and Brian. We all stayed together, yeah. and it was great. And, and then Brian stayed with me right up to to the end of his career with me. And Brian's decided that. He wants to go on and have, a, have another go with another trainer. Now, I've given me blessing. Yeah. I've gone, well, you crack on with that, son. If you've got that in your mind, that you think you have you still want to do that, well, go and have a go and go and do it. Yeah, it's yeah. fine. And if he feels that, that in any relationship, there comes a certain point in a relationship that things get a bit stale. Right. It happens. And it's the same, it's the same with us, you know, in, in a boxing relationship. I think me and Brian have been together 11 years. Yeah. So, you know, he, he wants to go and give it a try and, and he wants to give it a try with another coach because it went a bit stale with us. But that's fine. Yeah, I was going to say, how, how does that make you feel like when you've, you've put all your time, energy, 11 years in with, with someone and then all of a sudden it's like, I love you, but I've got to try something well, well, else. That to, must be a kick in the well, teeth well, a little no, bit. To, to be fair, we, we both felt the same. At, at that point, when Brian lost his last fight, I was at that point when I thought, you know what? I, I, I was fed up with it all. Do you right. know what I mean? I thought, you know what? I've had enough. There's nowhere else for him to go now, really. Well, well I, I, I hope there is, but I can't, you know. I, you but, know. So, but if he thinks there is for him, Fair, but you, you, you don't, got, listen, then it's not going to work. If it? he's got that in his head, Brian, if Brian Rolls believes that he's got more left to give, Go and yeah. get rid of it. Go and do it. Yeah. Go, and, go, go, go and give it a go. Give it a try with another trainer because that's what you want. I'm not going to hold you back. I spoke to him before on FaceTime, you know what I mean? Brian's one of my best mates. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, and I, I, I like to like I keep in contact with Tony. I like to keep in contact with my fighters. Some fighters you don't because some fighters leave and they leave on a bad note and that's the end of it. But yeah. Off you go. Crack on. You go and do what you want to do. But, but I like to keep in contact with him, keep speaking to him, like I do with all the others, like with Ricky Hatton and all the other lads. Still speak to them all, still get on with them all. But if, whether I think Brian Rose hasn't got any, any future left in boxing, but Brian thinks he has, that's up to Brian. Brian's got to go and do that. Yeah, yeah. And I hope, I really do hope, that he, he feels good about it and he gets going again. I yeah, really yeah. believe yeah, that. Yeah, because from the fighter's standpoint, if, if Brian... Let's say, for example, anyone, the, the thought, just thought, nah, that, that's it, and they, they stop with you, and then they don't want to regret it later on in life. Like, exactly. I wish I'd done. So, yeah, I mean, it's the right thing, and it's yeah, great definitely. that you've kept that relationship for them. Just what, the, uh, sorry, go on. I was just going to, speaking of Brian Rose, I wanted you to touch on that experience when you uh, went out to New York uh -huh. and you fought uh, Andre. Because well, you told me something a while ago about that, about the whole setup of it all and what a, yeah. a mess it was. So, I, mean, I don't know it, if you want to touch on that a bit. We went to. You know, it was crazy. We, we've got the biggest fight of our lives. Yeah. So, we, we, great, okay. So, everything's sorted out. So, the night before we flew out, George Groves and um, George, uh, Carl Froch fought the right. second time in Wembley. Right. Right. So, we flew out the next morning um, and we get to the hotel and all that. So, we get, in the, we get to the hotel, give our names in at these apartments and they go, I don't know what you're on about. So I said, what do, you, what do you mean? We've just got off the flight. So they said, oh, we, we've, not, we've not got you down here. So there was nobody to get hold of. 
Wow. Everyone had been at the Groves fight the night yeah. before. Everybody, right. So you couldn't get hold of anybody. So they took a bit of pity on us in these apartments and they said to us, right, you, you go, you know, go in that apartment there and we'll get it sorted out for you. And then it, they eventually got it sorted out. We'd been double booked somewhere else. You think there's an on purpose? No, I don't think so because it was booked from Matchroom. Oh, right, right. From, from England. Oh. So, so they double booked us. So they put us in. So Matchroom put us in. It's called Green Street. These, these beautiful apartments, you know yeah. what I mean? So we went into them apartments and there was me, Brian, and our Rob. And then the body belt and all that, which I use all the time, that was coming over. That went to the wrong place. <laughs> and I thought, what's fucking going on here? <laughs> it's like a carry-on film, do yeah. you know what I mean? And then the gym, we had to go and find the gym ourselves. So, so there's no one there with you when no, you got there? Nothing. No. But then what about when you got to the arena and like the security and all that in the corner? Well, And they sit you like miles away from the corner and won't let you get got, up on the office and the, stuff. We got to the arena first and um, we get... We get, and I go to get out of the bus and this bloke went, get back in there. And I thought, what the fuck are you talking to? <laughs> but because you have to put the sniffer dogs, it, when you go in that Barclays Centre, you drive in, don't you? Right. And then, and then they bring the sniffer dogs in and all that to get in. I mean, it's, yeah. it's, it's super, like, you know, um, secure, do you know what I mean? And you go in the dressing room, you can't come out of the dressing room. And I always like to take my fighters to the ring and let them have a look at the ring. Yeah. Because that gives them a feel of the atmosphere as well. Yeah. And I couldn't do it with Brian. Bloody hell. You know what I mean? So they wouldn't let you out? No, you couldn't go out of the, you couldn't go out of the chain room and go and look around the Shit. arena. I mean... Um, so I, first time he, he saw the ring was... When he was what? fighting in it. Yeah. yeah. And that yeah. was a lot to do with Brian. He was a bit shell-shocked with it all, do yeah. you know what I mean? No, I think that is for a fighter because you like to visualise it before you're going in there, so you like to visualise yeah. what it looks like. So, so I've walked to the ring now and they've put this official with me, this fellow... And we've walked to the ring, and he's gone, right, you don't get in that ring unless I get in first. <laughs> so, um, so he said, I'll go up the steps first at the end of the round, and then you follow me and you get in. And then the seat, the chairs, was about five foot from the ring. He said, and you just sit there. Right. So everything was new, do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Even a fucking cameraman. I'm stood talking to Brian, and, and someone's screaming here, screaming. And I'm talking to Brian, like giving him his tape. Listen, do this, do that, do that. And I've looked and his camera's gone. The cameraman's gone, get out of the way. So do you? To me. <laughs> Fuck off. Because <laughs> I'd had enough then. You know yeah. what I mean? I'd had enough. Yeah. Anyway, I'm mic'd up. I was mic'd up, was <laughs> Oh, well, I think I heard that. I so, remember so that, yeah. It's, it's, yeah. Still, it's, it's still on YouTube if you put... Um, Andrade Rose boxing HBO boxing after dark Rose Andrade you can hear me in the corner going move your head my broom move your head yeah. fuck off Brian yeah. and then <laughs> next thing they've took the mic off me yeah you've come and took, yeah. ripped the mic off me in between rounds fucking hell and this fella who's get, he's doing me head in I can't get in the ring and when I go when I go up the steps to stop the fight yeah he pulled me off pulled the you ring. down yeah wow. I remember seeing that because I remember thinking fuck stop it like this yeah. And then I was like, "Can't stop it!" Uh, yeah. And then you were telling me like, you were trying to As stop it, the and they wouldn't let you stop he's it. He's pulled me off because yeah. what are you supposed to do? You're supposed to that. go. Can you stop the fight? Then he goes up and stops the fight. Oh wow! Do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. So, uh, do you know after that fight, did you get much flack for it? Because I feel like oh, I got some belter. Yeah, I got I got a belter. It was funny. Um, someone someone put on Facebook, how can Bobby Rimmer be a big a great coach? He's got bigger tits than my mum. <laughs> no, but I mean, I, I did. To, to be fair, I, there was a lot. There was a lot of shit like that. But but you listen. If you if you open yourself up to social media, you've yeah. got to have that. You can't not have it, can you? Do you yeah. know what I mean? Because the thing is, where, where fighters when when fighters lose or, or or don't perform, it's always the coach that gets yeah. gets it right. I, I think. I mean, you know, that night we came up against a bit of a, a different fighter, didn't we, in Demetrius Andrade? Yeah, it's you know a different I mean? level, yeah. And you, you know what? He, he, tried, he tried his best, Brian. He tried, he tried his best, honestly. And, and, and on that night, his best wasn't good enough, do you know yeah. what I mean? And he kept getting up, didn't he? And he got up, didn't he? And you know that Andrade can bang, can't he? Yeah. yeah, he's a freak. And, and the worst thing what could have ever happened, he got dropped right at the end of the first round, Brian. 
Right. And then, in, you know, in the third round, and I know I might get slated for this, but Brian looked like he was coming back into it. You know, I thought, oh, he's, he's doing all right again now. And then yeah. all of a sudden, bang, bang, he got hit and hurt again at the end of the third round. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, it, it, it was horrible to watch and it was upsetting to watch, you know, because not only Brian, but Brian thought he could win, but I thought he could win. Yeah, that Dimitri, he won the World Championships as an amateur when I boxed in Chicago in 2007. Oh, and yeah. I, think, I think he got boxed at the tournament, like an yeah. unbelievable talent. Yeah. He's a nice guy, though, too. He's so been in here. Yeah, yeah, he's really sound. Uh, you know, and, and you know, he's it, just, like, just a great fighter, and Brian yeah. come up against... But, you know, what you've got to remember is that we didn't, we didn't take the easy route. Yeah. yeah. Brian Rose didn't take the easy route. Brian Rose got made mandatory challenger, and he had to, f he had to fight Javier Mas Maciel. Mm. He, was a great, he was a great fighter. And Brian beat him in yeah. Sheffield on a, sp a split decision and beat him. And then we, then we got Andrade. So even though, if I'd have said to Brian, listen, that Andrade's too good. How mm. can I say that to me, fighter? Yeah, yeah, you can't. Yeah. You can't <laughs> say that. You know no. what I mean? You, you, you couldn't say that. But, you know, Brian, at our bad luck, we came up against that kind of fighter. Yeah. Do you know yeah. what I mean? So when I trained, I, I only ever trained one fighter, a professional fighter, and it was Brendan Chabot, a UFC heavyweight, and, you know, I'm boxing. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, but I was the one in his corner and all that, and he, when he lost, I got so much shit. And it, like, it was something that I wasn't really prepared for. I, it didn't bother us as much as I got shit when I had that draw that time. But yeah, uh, but yeah and it was, it was tough. So that's what I was saying. Do you get shit and how does it affect you? Because it, it does affect... I'm a bubble who you are. If you've got 10 people saying you're fucking shite, you shite. Well, it affects you a little bit. I mean, it does, right. But, I mean, come on. You know, I always, I'm always... Don't forget, I'm old school art, so I'm, I believe that sticks and stones may break your bones, but names will ever hurt you. The world's changing for, for the worse. With but all. you're that old school, I would imagine you fucking finding out who said what, going round the house <laughs> with the boys, <laughs> just fucking battering them. That's, yeah. that's Bobby's old school. <laughs> but listen, Bobby did, didn't he? Yeah. He's keeping that off here. You know, to be fair, if, if they can't say it to your face... Yeah. You know, but, but, I mean, look, we're in, we're in a sport where we, you know people can see it there's more people can see it now because of social media and stuff like that so th there's great things with social media but there's bad things as well you know idiots can sit at home and say what they want about you yeah. Yeah. and you see it whereas normally without social media you'd have never seen it yeah there could have been people talking about you for years and you never knew right speaking of social media let's talk about this uh parcel or package video that's on your instagram oh my god this is the <laughs> fucking funniest thing i've seen glenn taggart is in this post the other day yeah uh so bobby trains rampage jackson i think he's talked about that and uh the mma fighter and bobby what's your instagram handle it's Bobby... Bobby the coach, isn't it? At Bobby the coach, yeah. I think at Bobby, Bobby the, the coach. coach. You've got to go there and see the video at, at that, Bobby the coach. that he posted with Rampage Jackson. That is so, so funny. I was going to repost it. <laughs> uh, we'll, get it in the, we'll get it in the show notes. So if you go to boxinglifepodcast.com forward slash Bobby, uh, we'll get that video in the show notes. It's so funny on Bobby's social media. Well, mate, you know, me and, me and Quentin, when we got to know each other, we, we, we hit it off like an house on fire, like I did with you yeah. and like I did with Brian and like I did with other lads and... Because he spent a lot of time in England, he's, he kind of gets our sense of humour, so it's pretty good, you right. know what I mean? But what, 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 at the minute, just at the minute, what he's doing, he's saying, like, things, you know, because we say things in English, like, yeah. mean different things, like fanny and arse. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. the biggest one I'm getting yeah. all the time, you know what I mean? So, <laughs> so, so, but he's, like, we'll get in the car and we go into, uh, to, to, we go to, he goes to one of these SEVACs, um, Sentence, right, you know, yeah. he goes in one MMT. So, so we go to the car in that. So him, him and the driver, Jeff, think they can take the piss. <laughs> so they, they, they go on about different things, like that one was about parcels <laughs> and mail. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you'll have to watch it because it goes on for a bit, but you'll understand what I'm saying, you know what I mean? And then the next one is chips. Yeah. Oh, is there another one? I haven't seen that one. Mate, Fries wait, and wait, chips. Yeah, wait till that comes out because he's going, listen... I go, chips with fish and chips, what are you talking about? <laughs> I went, chips are chip potatoes, and they are. Yeah. Went, chips are chip potato. And he goes, no, it's not. So I go, what is it then? He went, chips are French fries. <laughs> so I say, so, oh, so we should say we get fish and French fries now. 
<laughs> what are you seeing now? Potato chips are what you're dipping things in, you know, like Doritos and all yeah, that. Yeah, so, that's chips. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so you'll see all that, but, but we just have a laugh. Yeah, you know, that's like, great. Yeah, we, we, honestly. The, f the first time I met him, when, when some, somebody asked me would I, would I train him, I was in England. And I was training the lads in the gym and they brought him in. And I seen him come in like, and he's a big lad, isn't he? You know what I mean? And he sat down and he just kept going like that, falling asleep. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I went over to speak to him and he was like nodding off and all that. And I thought, what the fuck's going on here? <laughs> anyway, so anyway, he went and I, I put his name in and it come up he was an actor. And I thought, fuck me, he's an actor as well. I thought this would be hard work, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And then I got a, another look and I seen him slamming people and knocking people out and I thought, boom, he can fight a bit, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, he can fight. But he was jet lagged. He was jet lagged when he came in the gym. He'd got right off the flight and came right to the gym, do you know what I mean? Yeah. But from that point on, we got on great. We got on yeah. like an house on fire, you know? Have you, how, many, how many fights has he had with you? The first one was Glover Tierra. That was uh, in Chicago. Oh, I, how did he get on with him? He got, he got beat with that one, but I didn't work with him for that long. Glover was a bit of a beast. Yeah, he got beat with that one. And then, and then the, the best one was uh, when he fought this Maldonado because Maldonado had had 20 boxing fights, pro boxing fights, won them all and knocked 10 out in the first round. Oh, yeah. So he was ideal for me to train him because he was fighting a box on him. Yeah. And that was in uh, Quebec and Quinton boxed his head off. Poor Beck. Uh, yeah. Montreal, oh, Canada. Right, yeah. Quinton boxed his head off. Do you Did know he? What I mean? Oh yeah. Oh, he, boxed, he beat him out of sight. Oh nice. Do you know what I mean? He beat him out of sight. So that was great. You know yeah. what I mean? And then I then I come back and did a pre camp with him before we started this. Because like I could have worked with him before, but I've been training my own lads, my own boxers. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. And I've been over. To, I came. Brian came over with me and uh, Jack Massey once and was his sparring partners. <laughs> so do do you train any fighters now back in England? No, our Robert's doing it. Like right. I said, after Brian's fight, after the last fight of Brian, I thought, you right. know what, I'm going to have a break. Yeah. Good. This is perfect for you in the perfect situation because now you're here in California. Yeah. Yeah. You're still in the fight game. Uh, yeah. And, you know, you're working with someone like Quinton. Who's, yeah, who's I mean, I've not, I've not retired. Don't, you know, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying I've retired. I haven't, do you know what I mean? But I'm just, I, I just wanted to have a rest. Yeah. I wanted to have a break. And Quinton rang me and he went, what what you doing? So he said, I see you've split up with Brian and all that. I said, yeah, yeah. So he said, what, what you're up to? So I said, well... Um, sorry, I go for two seats. Huh? I said, I'm sorry, I go for two seats. All right, go on then. I said, I said, um, I said um, nothing really. He said, well, come over here. So I came over and we did a pre-camp. And I came here from June the 7th to September the 13th and got him in a good shape, got yeah. him going. And then I came back on the 1st of November, so, and it's really helped it. Yeah. Because I believe that as fighters get older, they need long... To get a fighter to that, to where you want uh, him... How old is Quinton? I don't know. <laughs> to be fair. He's been around forever. He's 30, years, like, 40s, right? I, I don't, don't know, he's not 40s, in his 40s, 40s no, yet. No, no. He's been yeah. late, 40, late, late 30s, right? Yeah. But I think the older a fighter I gets, I think, I think the longer you need to get him to, that, to that position, do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um... So we, we get on great. We have a laugh. It's funny. Yeah. I get looked after. I live in his house with him, so it's great. You and he takes the piss. Proper. <laughs> but he doesn't take it too much because you've yeah. seen I don't have it. Oh, do yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's fucking class when and you then, said you've got listen, off they don't brain. frighten me. <laughs> no, that, one no, eye older. No one frightens Bobby. <laughs> uh, so you've, if you've been around boxing for so long, you've seen, I'm sure you've seen some crooked shit in your time. Mate, listen, we, we probably worked for one of the worst, Frank Maloney. Yeah. You know, changed his name now, didn't he? Do you know yeah. what I mean? So Kelly Maloney. You, you know what? All the time I worked with him, I never got on with him. And you know the reason was? Because he was horrible, wasn't he? Yeah. I don't care who sees this. <laughs> I don't care. I'm telling the truth. He was fucking horrible, wasn't he? Yeah. You couldn't speak to him. All he wanted to do was shout at you, didn't he? You couldn't get, any, you couldn't get a word in edgeways with him. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Just horrible. Horrible person. Controlling. And that, that, that fight that I had when I drew, that was, that was like ridiculous. Mate, that, that was Bobby your trainer for that yeah. fight? Yeah. yeah. You know what happened? He, he, hurt, he hurt your arm, didn't you? Tore your bicep, yeah. didn't you? So I, I said, look, we, you, you, you can't fight. Yeah. And, and the day we went on, I remember that day you was on about not fighting. And then it was Frank Maloney that convince you to fight yeah what a knob because he Cause dropped it down to six rounds he said I'll drop it down to six rounds this bamboo you'll beat him easy he's no problem and all that now with one arm 
Exactly. Yeah. That's what he said. Yeah. Now, we, he, he kind of, you felt bad because it was, you know, you didn't want to let your fans down because you yeah. had a lot of travelling fans and, and he knew what to say, Frank Maloney, to get the fight on. And then what happens at the end of the sixth round? I think the fight's over. He turned round, the fight's over and the ref went, it's two more rounds. Yeah, and I'm fucked. Yeah, and I'm fucked. So it puts everyone in a sticky situation. Like, well, what can I do? Like, exactly. It's like, what can you do? What can I do? It's like, there's not much you can do, really. What can I do? I, what, there's nothing I can and do. And then after, when we went to the... If, if, we, if I'd have said, well, no, we're not fighting. Would have lost. He's a loss. Yeah. yeah. That's a loss on his career. Yeah. And I'll tell you what he did that night. He emptied the tank that night. Because yeah, yeah. that bamboola, that bamboola, a couple of fights later, got caught taking drugs. Yeah. He failed good. a drug test. So... Because he hit that bamboola with everything that night and bamboola was still stood there and I thought, fucking hell. I'll... Yeah. So I don't, how do we know that that night he wasn't on drugs that yeah. night? Because we didn't get drug tested. So I remember after that fight, uh, I remember barely, I remember in, in the dressing room. He was, was laying on the floor. I remember that on the floor, I was being sick. It was like exhaustion. And yeah. yeah. And, that, and that there like killed the love uh, totally for boxing for me. It was like, ah, yeah. fuck it. Yeah. Like you can't, you can't trust Did, anyone. You know the first time... So you did no sparring for that fight either, right? Not no, really. Device, we not did really. a little bit in the beginning. And that's and what hurt me on, wasn't we, it? We did, yeah. all, we did all body belt and bar and stuff. And he was fit for the fight, but for a six-rounder. Yeah. When you're mentally pre prepared for a six-rounder and then they had two rounds on, it's like running a, a race and you've got five laps and they go, oh, there's another one. Yeah. And you've when put you everything fluff. in for yeah, that yeah. last lap. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah I mean, that, that was horrible. That was Because he was trying to stop that bamboola that night. That last round, you re the sixth round, you was putting it on him to knock him out. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and that fellas out of love of boxing. And then, it, so I got, like, ridiculous criticism for that fight because everyone at home knew it was a eight-rounder. And I, I can't remember, but I'm sure you got criticism for that fight as well. I don't know if you did yeah, or not. Yeah, I got loads. Because it's like, why is he not? We should be in shape and do this. But then, as well, like, what's a bit shit for you? Like, I changed trainers after this fight. But it wasn't, it wasn't, uh, listen, he rang me. That horrible little midget rang me. <laughs> <laughs> right, I, I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm on my way home. Can we use that as the new intro for the podcast? I, 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 I'm on the way home and I get a phone call. Um, well, you can say what you want about Frank Malone. He doesn't exist anymore. Yeah, so, it true, yeah. so, I, so I get a phone call. <laughs> All right, it's Frank. I went, hello. He went, listen, I'm not happy with last night. I went, you're not happy with last night. So he said, well, he should be fitter than that. I went, fitter than what? I said, he should be fitter than what? Yeah. I said he was fit for six rounds. I said, listen, it was you who convinced him. I said, you convinced him to box with his, it, with his arm, arm injured. And he went, what? I went, listen, don't start shouting and bawling at me on the phone, you fucking idiot. I went, I'll turn around and come back to Sunderland <laughs> if you want. And he went, listen, I'm just saying, I think he's better off with another trainer. I said, but even with another trainer, yeah. if you get the rounds wrong... It'll still be the same way. Yeah, exactly. yeah. Anyway, one thing led to another, and, and he he convinced you to leave. Didn't yeah, he? But he never, know, did. He ever apologise for that? Yeah, no. Like put, throw hands up? Or, like, no, he never threw his hands up. He said he never knew. He's blamed it on Sky Sports. He blamed it right. on Sky. Yeah. Um, but then, uh, yeah, then, I, then I obviously I moved to America and started training with, with Tommy Brooks. But it's kind of like you kind of feel bo bad for Bobby because. Well, it's well like, mate, I never felt bad because do you know what? Listen, let's look at it in a different way then. Let's not look at it in a negative way. If you want to come to America with Tommy Brooks, we won't be sat here today. That's true, 100%. So, yeah. so forget me, it's yeah. bettered your life. Yeah. M you know, m my life. So we've got, a, we've got Frank to thank, really, haven't we? Yeah, well, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not thanking him for anything. Let's thank the people who got it wrong at Sky. Don't <laughs> yeah. thank him for anything. Yeah. But you're like, you came to America. If you want to come to America... You wouldn't have met Tommy Brooks. You wouldn't have been here now. Yeah. You wouldn't have had what you have. Right, yeah. So... So it don't matter. Yeah, it's, a, it's a positive yeah. for me because you're doing well. I'm proud of you and I'm really glad nice you're doing moment. well. So if it don't matter to, if I get a bit of shit on it on social media right, from, for yeah. the fight because you're doing well out of it. Yeah. So who cares? Yeah. I don't care. Yeah. I'll tell you what, uh, I've spoken about him before on the podcast. Andy Scott's doing all right now, isn't he? Doing great. Yeah. But do you remember, do you do you remember Andy Scott? You remember? And we won't go into it, but he nearly ruined Andy Scott in Maloney, didn't he? Yeah. Didn't he? Yeah. That's what a little horrible person he was, wasn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. I mean, he, he, I don't know if he was paying them or, or what for the work that he was supposed to be doing, but Andy yeah. Scott's doing well now. Doing great. Andy. Yeah. He, he's the guy who, who, uh, who interviews the fighters after the fight's in the ring yeah. now. And uh, yeah, and he, he started off, he was a student who 
uh, started following me around, following well, us around, yeah. done some videos. He done that for us. great film for us, didn't he? Do you remember? He did a film of us, didn't he? Yeah, he done a few. He done a done few. loads, didn't he? Yeah, and it's class. Got some great footage of, you know what of I mean? us working together. Aye. So Quinton's fighting back to you, Bob. Quinton's fighting um, in January, January 20th, 20th. Yeah. in the Bellator heavyweight tournament. Yeah, that's going to be good. I told him, Quinton, I said, listen, I've never had an heavyweight champion, so... Oh, is it for the cha championship? Yeah, you get a belt at the end of it as well. You'll be that, champion man. of Bellator at the end yeah. of it. Nice. You know? So what's your goals now? Are you, are you, have you washed your hands with... Not washed your hands, but are you done with the boxing game? No, no. Um, what I've done, I've come out here to help Quinton, and then, um, and then um, I'll see how it goes when I go back home. Yeah. Is there anyone that you thinking of working with or you no, want to work with no or? no not at all do you know what I mean and uh, listen it, it's, it's no secret that I keep racing pigeons is it <laughs> you know I, I race pigeons don't I yeah. and I, I race them in, in a proper competitive way so so I, you know I, it, it, I'm not going to go out looking for people if somebody comes up to me and says listen Bob you know I'm looking for a trainer and, they, and they're okay and they want to do it well then I'll do it mm. do you know what I mean yeah. But I'm not actively going to go out looking at. I do, I do what you do. I've got a lot of personal classes and people to look after at home. So you know, I make good money doing that. That's. Do you not feel like now, like you've done that a little bit because you weren't doing that when you were when you were balls deep in the fight, and you've done that a little bit. Do you not feel like now? It's better because you make good money. The pressure's oh, off. Mate, like there's no yeah, pressure. The, you haven't got the headache nah. of, of the fighters. It, 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 yeah, there is it's no nice. pressure. You can enjoy your life. Yeah, you know what I mean. There's, there's no pressure whatsoever. Do you know what I mean? And, and, I, and the, the boxers that I had, Jack Massey, who's a real good prospect, and Casey Connolly, who's a good prospect, and, and you know, they've stayed, they've, and, Jack, and uh, Charlie Schofield, who's, who's undefeated, they're all undefeated, them, and they've, right. our Rob's looking after them, so our Rob's got the gym now, he's running the gym, and he's training the fighters over there, and he's doing really good at it. What happened with Jack Hornfield? Why are you, did you and him follow? It just, I think, it, we just, we didn't see eye to eye in the end. Right. Me well, and me and Jack. I mean, uh, Jack was travelling from Blackpool to, to Manchester every day. Brian was staying down here, and Jack was travelling it. So Jack got a little bit fed up of it. You know right. what I mean? And we just didn't see eye to eye. Do yeah. you know what I mean? Oh, so I remember one time, Bob. I, I hated training in the mornings, like at seven o'clock and all that. So we're in Sunderland. Bobby would come to Sunderland training me and Brian. Brian was stopping at mine. Bobby was in the hotel. And he's like, all right, so we're meeting at seven o'clock in the morning, going for a run. I was like, fuck. And it was really... snowing, wasn't it? Do you remember? Aye. I was like, I really Snow. don't want to go for a run. And Bobby's like, now we're going for a run. So me and, driving, me and Brian's driving around Sunderland late that night. So you know what, what I've done? A pair of bastards. <laughs> I, went, I went to Bobby's hotel. <laughs> <laughs> I let his fucking tyres down in his car. <laughs> <laughs> was it you? Yeah. <laughs> it was me and Brian. Where, Is he just finding oh, this out yeah. now? <laughs> hey, Bo, Bo, Rosie, wait till I speak to you. Like. <laughs> I remember coming up, my tyre was down, wasn't it? He's getting up in the morning. Right, I'm going to pick the lads up. We fast asleep. We also get to text from boys. Can't run them up this morning. <laughs> me, me, me tires are flat. <laughs> <laughs> Better wanker. <laughs> I can't yeah. believe. It. Was that you? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I that was. Class, I, I remember you in your, oh. your, your van. I'll tell you what. We had a laugh up there. We had a laugh, didn't we? Yeah. You know, even though we we always worked hard, but we always had a laugh and stuff, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, it was great. And like I said, that was one of the best things about working. We? we could have, we could have a laugh. Yeah. And uh, that's quality. That. Uh, that. Let his tires down. That's how much I hated fucking running early in the morning. <laughs> no. Wait morning. till I see Rosie now. He's in trouble now. <laughs> I'll get old him later. Tell him that I've blamed him. Yeah, I will. Uh, so, Bobby, uh, thanks for coming on the show, mate. Yep. It's been great. It's always good to catch up with you, and we can do it again soon. Yeah, uh, anytime you want. So, me. I want people to follow you on social media on the Bo uh, coach, coach Bobby Rimmer. At, at Bobby Bo the coach. Bobby the coach. At Bobby the coach. Bobby underscore Rimmer on Twitter. Yeah, follow him and have a look at this uh, Rampage Jackson <laughs> video. We'll put it on the on the show notes as well. Boxinglifepodcast.com forward slash Bobby. Uh, anything else, mate? No, no, mate. That's that's great. Fantastic. It's been great to be here, and thanks for for asking me to come on. Yeah. All right. Thanks, thanks for coming. Next on. time, we'll see you later. <laughs>